Okay, today I'm going to show you the watering system here in the garden. And uh, I sometimes call it the poor man's irrigation system. But it's, uh, by the time you buy all the components and everything, I guess it doesn't really qualify as that either. But it is a budget irrigation system because it hasn't got all the, you know, the buried pipes and uh, multiple fixtures all over the place and uh, a big centralized uh, uh, processing control unit and all that good stuff. Um, what it does consist of, let me show you the meat and potatoes first. Uh, this is really kind of the heart of, uh, of the system, um, or one of them anyway. Um, this is a uh, programmable timer unit, and it's made by Orbit, and it controls uh, these valves that are right down here, actually, um, and individually, and uh, there's room for one more. I'll explain what all this stuff is later. Um, but uh, through this one timer unit, you can select your start time and durations and frequency and all that good stuff. It's very intuitive, very easy to set as well. Uh, and then, uh, one by one, when the, when the start time happens, each one of these will go off for their allotted amount of time uh, in order. Now, uh, this one here is up close to the mini barn, and uh, there's one other one. So let me go quick show you that too. Now in the center of your screen there is the control unit that we were just standing at. Um, but now if we zoom way out here, you see the mini barn there and the umbrella in the center of the garden. And uh, this is the one that's out in the uh, far corner um, of, the, uh, of the garden. I guess this is the uh, southwest corner. And you can see that it also has um, three valves. And uh, this timer drives those three valves. And there's actually uh, room for one more uh, valve underneath there that we're not using. And that's the same um, case with uh, the timer that's on the... Uh, the mini barn. Now what these guys drive are these, which are uh, impact sprinkler heads, and they're called impact sprinklers because when the, um, uh, when the water comes through, the, the force of the water drives these mechanisms and um, spins it around and, uh, and then it flips its uh, mechanism so that it comes back the other way. And um, so that's what drives it. and. Um, uh, that's why they're called impact sprinklers. And uh, this unit here drives this one here, which is in the south uh, east corner of the or southwest corner of the garden. And there's another one uh, way over there in the um, southeast corner of the garden. And also there's one. Uh, I don't know if I can show you that one. It doesn't show up very well, but at the top of that pole there is an impact sprinkler head. Uh, there you can see it a little bit better, um, which uh, um, waters our magnificent uh, uh, corn patch out in the back, the exterior corn patch. Now the thing about uh, impact sprinkler heads is, is that the water pressure is what drives the mechanism uh, to make it rotate uh, and, and cover the area that you want to cover. And if the water pressure isn't enough, um, the sprinkler head will come around and just stop, or it'll get to the end, and there won't be enough pressure for it to flick the mechanism to then come back the other way. And that's the way it uh, uh, gets the coverage that it does. And that's the problem we are having out here in the garden, because our um, uh, water feed comes from a spigot on the side of the house there, and then there's about a hundred foot uh, run of hose, which is what that black hose is up against the wall, uh, that uh, terminates right over here that supplies all the uh, water to the garden. And then, of course, we split it out with uh, various manifolds and things like that. Um, and then I showed you the control unit, but anyway, we needed to have more pressure in the water, so that's where uh, my Rube Goldberg skills came in. and. Um, and this is what I uh, this is what I came up with. This is a uh, Flowtech um, water pressure booster pump, and it's specifically designed to boost the pressure going into um, hose-driven uh, sprinkler systems, which of course is what we're talking about here. And uh, I've got it all hooked up here, but uh, just to show you how it how the flow goes, let's uh, step back outside here, and. Um, 
Uh, here's again the feed coming from the house. It goes down to this manifold. I'll tell you about this later, but uh, the, the water then comes down through this hose, um, and it's sort of a, a pressure appliance hose, um, just to uh, have it look different. And um, that water flows down into here and into the intake of the pump then the pump boosts the pressure and the output comes back out through this other blue hose and I just like to use those blue hoses to differentiate which ones are are to and from the pump and uh, then that comes out here to the the manifold that drives the um, uh, the watering system and uh, it also uh, um, drives a hose that's down here um, that leads out to the the south side of the garden where of course the other control unit is way back in the corner there sort of beyond the umbrella um, that I showed you before and um, so basically that's that's how it's hooked up um, but uh, the the issue is, is that these are, are capable of developing um, quite a bit of uh, pressure and uh, they're just operated by a manual switch and so it had to be turned on when you were sprinkling and then turned off when you weren't sprinkling so it wouldn't uh, put too much pressure in the hoses and that sort of thing. So <clears throat> that's where um, uh, I decided to see if I could um, somehow automate it so that the pump would only come on uh, when it was needed, kind of like the uh, you know your well pump, um, and that's where all this stuff comes in here. What I decided to try and do was, uh, speaking of a well pump, um, try to get it so that the uh, pump is only activated when the pressure requires it or the drop of pressure requires it. And uh, so similar to the way a well pump is set up, um, this hose feed actually is nothing more than uh, just to tell this unit what the pressure is in the sprinkler system. And um, then this unit is a switch just like you would have on a well pump that when the pressure drops below a certain amount it turns on the pump to bring the pressure back up and maintain the pressure. And so this switch actually operates this um, uh, outlet box and the outlet box is what the um, pump is plugged into and the power switch is just always on. So the switch is always on on the, on the pump but <clears throat> this <clears throat> outlet only gets power when the pressure drops um, below uh, I think about 30 pounds. <clears throat> And then as the pressure builds, if it builds up to above uh, 75 pounds, which gets a little dangerous, uh, it'll shut off. So if that, that happens, it shuts off. So in effect, when the sprinklers start to run, this kicks in because the power of the pressure drops. But then as soon as the sprinklers turn off, the pressure builds up to um, 70, 75, and then the pump automatically uh, turns off again. And then, as you can see from this gauge, it's not moving at all. The uh, pressure remains pretty constant, just very slowly drops, and then uh, the pressure will kick in again. Now, the way that I did that was, um, here's again the feed coming from the pump. So this is the pressurized feed. And then I just ran this hose down again through the mini barn wall and that hose is what comes up and feeds this mechanism. So this is nothing more than just a place to hold the pressure so that this guy can see it like I said before. And um, so that's pretty much uh, it. There's a couple other things I want to show you. This is a pressure relief valve and you usually see these in a house. Um, 
if the pressure gets above 75 pounds, which again is, you know, you don't want to rupture your, your hoses or your fixtures, um, this will actually start to, to drip water out the, out the back here and relieve the pressure. There's a big spring in here and if it gets above 75, it just starts to relieve the pressure so it can't go too far above 75. And um, that's just in case for some reason the pump didn't turn off when it was supposed to and the pressure kept building and building and building. That just sort of is a safety, safety valve. And this is the other thing that I said I would tell you about later. This is a check valve, or an anti-siphon valve, or an anti-backflow valve, whatever you want to call it. And what that does is it only allows the water to go in this direction. And what, why that's here is because uh, before, if you would turn on the water in the house, or turn on the water, you know, to, to um, uh, you know, just did manual watering, the pressure would drop over here, and the pump would kick in. So whenever the pump kicked in, it would actually suck so much water out of the house system that the pressure would drop every place else but in here. Um, so this way the pressure gets um, uh, built up in here and it doesn't get sucked back when you turn on another one of these. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining this very well. But anyway, the pressure stays here and this is the, the this is the uh, what the uh, pressure monitor inside the barn there is, is uh, measuring and because it can't flow back it'll stay high here even if any of these are opened up and so that way the pump isn't you know coming on when it's not really doing anything except for pulling pressure from the rest of the system. So uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, how, how it uh, is all put together. I uh, don't know if I explained it very well, um, but um, that's it. Basically it's a pressure booster and uh, it's uh, tied to that uh, uh, pressure sensor switch which uh, then allows the uh, pump to only come on when it's uh, required and that is basically whenever the sprinklers turn on because uh, that's the only thing that draws the pressure from that uh, that system that closed basically a closed system um, so now I'm just gonna show you how it works when the uh, sprinklers come on and uh, you'll see the uh, the the pump kick in and um, then I'll turn the sprinkler off and you'll see it drop back out again uh, so let's take a look at it in operation isn't this exciting Okay, the sprinkler is about to kick in. You heard that kick in. Pump is going. You can see the pressure is being maintained uh, upwards of uh, 45 as the sprinkler is running out there. And then um, now I'll manually turn this off if I can reach it. And um, You'll hear the click of the, the um, and you can actually see the switch going, and then you see that the pressure drops or uh, climbs up to uh, 60 or so, um, and uh, the pump, you can hear, of course, turned off. Um, so uh, that's the way it's supposed to work, and uh, it seems to work pretty well so far. Okay, so there you have it. You've seen how it's hooked up. Uh, you've seen how it works. It's actually working right now. Um, and uh, now you too can make your own uh, budget irrigation system for your garden. Um, but don't uh, hold me responsible if it doesn't work the way it works for me. Uh, this was just showing you what I do. I take no responsibility if you blow up your hoses and sprinklers and everything else. See y'all.